Just showed you a couple of scenes there from The Favorite and Roma. Those films are leading the pack with 10 Oscar nominations apiece. We've got Eli Glasner, who's been watching all of those nominations roll out this morning. You've got your take on it, but history was made, right? In so many ways. I mean, Roma alone, not too shabby for a movie that most of us watched on Netflix, mm -hmm. uh, and now leading the pack, well, tied with the favorite for 10 nominations. Add to that the Coen Brothers film, uh, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, and you have a lot for that streaming service, so the industry changing. But let's take a look at Black Panther, because never before has a comic movie soared into the best picture category but that's exactly what Black Panther did this morning seven nominations including best picture best song production design sound editing costume now what's missing from their nominations well some of the big more prestigious awards no acting awards nothing for Michael B Jordan his Killmonger that would have been lovely nothing for Chadwick Boseman Panther himself nothing for the director Ryan Coogler how you nominate a movie for best picture but not the director something a lot of people will be scratching their heads on but speaking of directors, let's take a look at another movie, Black Klansman. There it is, based on a true story of two police officers working together, a black cop and a Jewish cop, to infiltrate the Ku Klux Klan. Nominated this morning, many categories, including Best Director for Spike Lee. Now, back in 1989, he made the classic Do the Right Thing, remarkably never nominated until today, 30 years later. Now, Lee is not the kind of director to look for valid from the Academy, but he will take it. Adam Driver also nominated this morning, but surprisingly, J.D. Washington, the star of Black Klansman, son of Denzel, not nominated this morning. But it's interesting, you know, at the Oscars, we've been having this conversation, the Academy, really, about diversity and relevance. Mm -hmm. So in terms of Black Panther, one of the most successful um, comic book films of all time, they have kind of answered that question. Diversity, you see the Academy really aggressively inviting new members, um, trying to broaden their uh, background as a voting body. In the last three years, they have invited close to 2,400 members. And so I think you see those results bearing fruit this morning. But here's what's missing. Uh, you're going to hear this hashtag once again, Oscar so male. Not a lot of women mentioned in some of those more important categories. No female directors, no female cinematographers. So although the Oscar voters are changing, maybe you still need to work on some of those aspects. I want to ask you about some of the nominated films as well. Some of them have met with controversy yet Eli they have managed to survive yeah Green Book I mean this is the movie where again and again the producer have had some real headaches you had the star Viggo Mortensen um, uttering the n-word at a press panel then apologizing he's nominated this morning based on a true story he plays Tony Lip he drives the character named Don Shirley Shirley's own family have complained calling this film a symphony of lies that didn't start a uh, stop mashallah Ali from getting a nomination. There he is. So many nominations for Green Book. It is kind of an old-fashioned, crowd-pleasing film. A feel-good movie about racism. Sounds weird to say, but that's what it is, and people like that kind of cinematic comfort food. And then there's Bohemian Rhapsody. So this is the movie directed by Brian Singer, who was under a cloud of sexual assault charges, who was fired from the film halfway through, and yet this morning, a number of nominations, most importantly for Rami Malek playing Freddie Mercury. So even even though people complain about the accuracy of uh, the portrayal of Freddie and his life story, uh, this morning, a little bit of uh, Oscar glow for Bohemian Rhapsody. And some of the races, I know you like to pick them, but some of them are just too close to call, aren't they? Oh my goodness. So let's keep talking about the men and take a look at that best actor category, because, uh, wow, I mean, it's, it's a tough one. So you got Christian Bale um, playing Vice President Dick Cheney in Vice. You got Bradley Cooper, not nominated as a director, but certainly as the country crooner. There he is, Rami Malek for Freddie Mercury. Willem Dafoe, my heart source, so happy to see his portrayal of Van Gogh get in there. And then Vigo again. So I, ugh, I don't know. I think I would go for Bohemian Rhapsody. I think Rami Malek, in a way, is kind of the safe choice. Has, I mean, his portrayal, I mean, such an enthusiastic, uh, emotive, visceral performance. Performance, it would be that. But then, really interesting, let's take a look at Best Supporting Actress. Now, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, the favorite, 10 nominations this morning. 
They're actually competing against themselves. Emma Stone and co-star Rachel Weisz competing against each other in the Best Supporting Actress category. Then you have Regina King for If Beale Street Could Talk, one of the few awards for that movie. And then Marina de Travier, uh, she from Roma. Now, she's more of a professional actor than Yelitsa Aparicio, who was also nominated. And then Amy Adams, again, for Vice. If I had, I can't, I don't know. You know. Actually, I do know. Regina King. She already got, I believe, the Golden Globe, and uh, it's kind of been uh, her season, and she is an amazing director, producer, and actor, so there you go. I'm I just going to ride on your coattails <laughs> for fine. all my Oscars. Jump on. Boy. Jump <laughs> on. Canadian contenders, help me out with that category. Animation, uh, remarkable. Once again, Canada, you know, that maple leaf flying strong in one category, three nominees, four if you include the husband and wife team. So let's take a look. That's Animal Behavior from David Fine and Alison Snowden. They're now based in Vancouver. This is their fourth Oscar nomination. They've already won one Oscar. It's about animals in group therapy, sure. And then you have this touching film, Weekends, about a boy going back and forth between his divorced parents. That's also nominated. Uh, and then finally, Bao from Dami Shi. So this is a Canadian director uh, using her own real life experience, her own Chinese Canadian cultural cuisine to make a movie about a dumpling that comes to life. She's nominated. And also I should mention Gordon Sim, mm -hmm. production designer. He already won for Chicago. He was nominated for the movie Nine, nominated again this morning for Mary Poppins Returns. So great Canadian names hiding there in some of the uh, lesser known categories, but lots of uh, Canadian pride this morning. Excellent. Thank you, Eli. I know it's an exciting time of year and I look forward to it as well.